Now, don't you think that would be the beginning of all the problems? Because uh, if you take history, all the major battles have been fought because of uh, theism, because of uh, uh, religion. Uh, my, uh, this thing would be, could be labeled differently. I mean, a temple in every city would be, could be, could be labeled No, labeled I did not say temple in every city, did I say that? I said you must, your home, your, your city, your town and your state and your nation and the world should become like a temple. That cannot be done by building more temples. That can only be done by you being in touch with the divine. And anyway, about the major wars, you need to understand this. There never was any kind of religious war till about two thousand years ago, okay? Not even two thousand, about sixteen, seventeen hundred years ago. There never was because in the East, in this part of the world, there was no such thing as religion. If you do not know this, this is the only religionless culture, godless culture. This may be a little scary for people because we have thirty-three million gods and goddesses in this country. That happened when our population was thirty-three million. Since then, <laughs> our population has increased but we did not create enough gods and goddesses. Because of Western influence, we started feeling ashamed of gods and goddesses. If each one of you, there's something called as Ishtadevata, you can create your own god. You don't like any of the things available, you can make a tree in your house, God, you worship it. Nobody will think it's an odd thing in this country. There's a rock in your garden, you can worship it, nobody will think it's odd. You can worship your mother, you can worship your wife, you can worship your child, you can worship a cow, whatever you want. But the important thing is, there should be devotion in your heart. Because if there is no devotion, this… with this much intelligence, this animal will go crazy. It needs devotion. Devotion means not about God, about you, isn't it? Is devotion about you or about God? Whose quality does it change? Whose quality does it change? Your quality or God's quality? It's about you. It's about transforming you into a certain level of sweetness which cannot be contaminated from outside. This is what devotion means. That you are a devote means you have created a certain sweetness in your emotion which cannot be contaminated, which cannot be made bitter by somebody else. If you love this person, if this person gets against you, your love becomes poison, isn't it? Yes or no? So devotion is that dimension of intelligence where you know how to manage your sweetness irrespective of what the world is doing to you and the people are doing to you. If you don't have this capability, you will not go very far in this world. Isn't it? If you have the fear that you could become bitter, you will only take baby steps in your life. If you know no matter what happens, this is how I am. It does not matter what happens to me in this world, this is how I will be. If this assurance you have, only then you take full strides into the world. Otherwise, you will always take hesitating strides into the world, isn't it? So. There is no… there has never been a religion in this country, I want you to know. What you call as Hindu is a geographical identity. Anybody who's born in the land of Indus is a Hindu. You can believe in God and be a Hindu. You can disbelieve in God and be a Hindu. In your house, if you have five people, five people can worship five different types of gods and still be okay with each other. This is not allowed anywhere else because here we know that God is man's making. It is a device that we have created to touch the divine. Yes? If you do not understand this, how did all the gods come? We want to create devices to somehow touch the dimension, which is the basis of creation. So we evolved a whole technology of God making, not just creating forms, energizing them in such a way that it will assist you to touch the dimension of life. Everything is same energy. If you take some filth from the gutter and throw it at the root of the mango tree, it becomes a mango. The filth and the mango are same, isn't it? So why don't you just eat the filth, not the mango? No, you cannot eat that 
but the mango you want to eat. This filth has been transformed into such sweetness, isn't it? What you call as earth that you walk upon is what is sitting here as your body and my body, isn't it? Yes or no? So it is the same thing, but it can be transformed into different dimensions of sweetness and energy and possibility, though it's the same thing. So understanding this, we evolved a whole science of consecration where we know how to turn a stone into divine. It is not a simple process. It is not just by belief. It is not just because of somebody believes it, it will reverberate. There is a whole science as to how to energize a space. Simply you can energize this space, make it crackle. You can take any object and make it. For example, you ho if you are sensitive, you hold this in your hand, I will just hold it in my hand for one minute and give it to you, it'll feel different. Only problem is, this object will not be able to hold that energy for too long. After some time it'll dissipate and again become a metal plate. If you create this form with the necessary care, you can energize it in a way that it stays for a long period. So, we can consecrate an object. What is just stone right now will reverberate with a tremendous field of energy. If people come and just sit there, their lives are transformed. It is for this the temples were built. Temples are not a place of worship. Nobody is leading a prayer, there is no philosophy being propounded. But they told you one thing, if you go to the temple, you must sit there for some time. Did they tell… did they tell you this? Huh? Nobody told you you have to send an application to God, but they told you you must sit there for some time. Now these days you're just touching your bottom to the floor and running away, that is not the idea. This is like a public… public battery charging place. If the place is kept alive, if you sit there, your life can transform itself. If it is properly created, I am talking about the ancient temples. Today's temples, many of them are built like shopping complexes, probably for the same purpose, that's a different thing. But if it's properly done, it is a phenomenally energizing space. Life can change simply sitting there. 